Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's see how this revaluation will be reported in accounts. Revaluation is now 2.1 million and less net book value as on 1st January 2012. So we need two years depreciation that is 800,000 and balance comes to net book value on end of 11 years uh, 2011 comes to 1.2 so the difference between 2.1 and 1.2 comes to revaluation surplus of 900 now depreciation will be now on the new value which is 2.1 million and the life is at three years so first year depreciation is going to be 700,000 now see the accounts assets accumulated depreciation revaluation surplus how this entry is required them assets was 2.1 million initially it was 2 million so what we are doing we are debiting another 100000 to the asset account and the depreciation accumulated depreciation which we have credited now we are reversing it and we are debiting the accumulated depreciation and the surplus of 9000 we are crediting. Now the depreciation expense for 2012 is 700,000. The cumulative depreciation is 700,000. And re revaluation reserve we debit and credit retained earnings. So this is another catch here. You know you are charging depreciation 400,000 first year, second year. Now in third year you are charging a depreciation of 700,000 which means you are charging 300,000 extra depreciation. So this extra depreciation, you take it out from revaluation reserve because you charge profit 700,000. So profit reduced by 700,000. So what we do, we should compensate by debiting the revaluation reserve and crediting the retained earnings. I mean, ultimately profit goes to retained earnings. So we straight away crediting the retained earnings because we can't do, we can't go back. So we, in this particular year, we adjust it through retained earning. Transfer from revaluation to retained earning is simply, uh, this is excess depreciation of 700 minus 400,000. Now the revenue surplus do not sit on the balance sheet in perpetuity. Still there is a balance of, it's 900,000, we reverse only 300,000. So still there is a 600,000 in revaluation reserve. But it is written off over the useful economic life by transfer to retained earnings. And this way, when the asset is fully depreciated, the revaluation surplus should be written down to zero. Let us sell the asset. Let's assume if we are selling the assets on 1st of January 2013 for 1500. So look here, the gain is, how much is gain? You try to understand that two, 0.1 million less 700,000 at the year depreciation. So 14, 1.4. So now you're selling for 1.5. So there's a gain of 100,000 on disposal and will be taken to income statement. This will be taken to income statement, not retained in the state because you're disposing of an assets. Carrying value minus 1,400 and sales value is more than carrying value. So there is a profit of 1 million, 100,000. Now the proceeds entry, 1,500,000 and then we have a net book value of 1,400,000 and then we have a gain on disposal and the revaluation surplus is 600 will be transferred to retained earning because you have sold the asset. So any balance after an asset has been sold in the revaluation surplus should be returned back to the retained earning. Now, the accounts, cash, debit, accumulated depreciation, debit, asset account, credit, and gain on disposal, credit. So this is how the revalued assets depreciated and ultimately sold out. So you have to work out any surplus on revaluation should also be reversed and any gain on sale. The gain on sale should be taken to the income statement and so far surplus on revaluation is concerned that goes to retained earnings state. Thank you very much.